Hello and welcome to a new video about Prometics. This time we're going to talk about, you know, how we can control, how we are using control uh, valves for our system. Well, I will again draw a possible control. Yeah? This time I'm going to use a single acting cylinder. Yeah? So there's a single acting cylinder. That's the spring. The valve I need for a single acting cylinder is a 3-2-way valve. Right now, here we would have pressure intake. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Here we have an exhaust, here it's spring loaded, here is a button. Yeah. And if I press the button, the cylinder will go out. Okay. Pretty straightforward approach. Okay. This is the most simple approach because my input element, because here is an input button, my input element is already my control element and my control element is switching the power to, to my cylinder. Yeah. However, this is not used very often. I show you now the version or the, the variant, how it is more common. Yeah. And afterwards I explain you why. Yeah. So we again we have a single acting cylinder. Again we have here the three two way valve. Again it's spring loaded. Again we are filling it and again here is the pressure source. And here we have three, one, two, three. And now I do not put the button here immediately. I use a second valve. In this case, also a three, two way valve. And this I will use to switch this valve. So here is the connector 1, 2. This is a pneumatically controlled valve. Yeah? And here we are also connected to the pressure source. 1, 2, 3. So if we push here now, 1 and 2 are connected. This is operated. This will push this and we are going out. This here is called direct and this here is called non-direct. Direct und indirect in German. Yeah. Control. This is much simpler to say. Yeah. However, this is more usual. Why? Yeah. Because usually here we want to have power. In the cylinder we want to have power because this is our working element. So the cylinders are usually powerful. There's a reasonable size of cylinder and so on. Yeah. So we need to switch a reasonable sized tube, hose, whatever is connected here. Yeah. To switch a reasonable sized tube, I need a reasonable sized valve. Yeah. A reasonable sized valve does have a, uh, operating forces and so on. Yeah need more power. Yeah? So here this is not that easy. This can only be done at rather small cylinders and rather small forces. Then I can use this variant. Yeah? If this here is a big bigger valve, yeah? I can operate this bigger valve with some small valve. Yeah? And this small valve is simply helping me by switching this bigger valve. I said, yeah, hey, this we had already pre-controlled valve. Yeah, why don't we use pre-controlled valve? Yeah. yeah, because sometimes or very often the input elements are not close to the working elements. They are somewhere. Yeah, so there is quite a distance in between. And I do not want. I do not want to have big 
tubes, hoses, yeah, air hoses, very long. Yeah, because I need to fill them, I need to pressurize them, I need a lot of air to fill bigger, bigger uh, hoses. I, if I can operate this with small, tiny signal hoses where not really much air has to, it's just about pressure, information taking, yeah, then I need less power. Yeah? It's a big difference if I pressurize a hose like this or a hose like this. So also here, this is an advantage. So if there is, if this is very close to this cylinder, this is no issue. Yeah? If this and the, the working element are pretty far apart, yeah, then this is an issue. Then I keep this a very tiny, tiny line and it's easy. Yeah? I do not waste energy too much. Yeah? Instead of making this line long, because then I really have to pressurize quite a big amount of volume simply inside the, the tube. Yeah. Non-direct approach, the usual one. Yeah. Use it, the price, which is more than the cylinder, will pay itself by, by simply by the operating costs. Yeah. So, direct, indirect approach, indirect approach, non-direct approach, preferable yeah. and used. Reasons I just told you. Yeah, now we know quite a lot of stuff. Yeah? We know quite a lot of valves now. We know, uh, you know, uh, we can throttle, we can switch, we can operate and so on. So, we are ready to solve some issues. This is what we're going to start in the next video. Next video, we will slowly extend our knowledge about how we can build up. Yeah, we simply use the symbols and say, okay, this and that we want to reach. And now how, which valve we have to connect how to each other that this goal is reached. Yeah? Some examples then starting next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.